Hey guys, welcome back. Josh with Happy Little Landscapes here. Just finishing Beaver Creek number three, uh, and we're gonna show you guys how to make this painting um, right from scratch. So if you stick with us, uh, we'll get started. I'm gonna teach you how to do one of my favorite paintings that I like to call Beaver Creek on a 24 by 36 inch canvas today. It's already been primed with Bob's Liquid White. Good indication if you have enough is you wanna be able to see your fingerprint, not too much, but not too little. I'll show you what paints that we're gonna be using today. I'll list them below as I'm speaking right now, they'll be rolling back and forth. Um, and we'll get started with our Indian yellow on both sides of our brush. And a lot of times I start too high with it and then I don't have anywhere to go. So let's start about midway in the canvas here and just kind of back and forth like Bob Ross does, just a little bit of yellow. You don't wanna blend it in too much. You can leave the streaky bits. For now, it's not gonna make a difference. And without even washing our brush, we're gonna go into bright red and kind of go around where we were. Give yourself a little bit of room, a little bit of room in between so they can blend together. And then we might as well do it underneath here as well. Gonna have a little bit of water down there eventually. And like I said, don't get too into mixing it yet. We're going to go from there right into a lizard and crimson, which is much darker. Throw a bit of green up there. We'll have to cover over it. It's got it on my palette there. Make a nice color. Let's see. A little bit of lizard and crimson. I just want to start filling up the rest of this guy with this purpley orangish mixture that we've made. And then when we go, we'll blend them all in and it'll look real cool. So then we're gonna go right into our darker color of the blues, which is our phthalo blue. Now that we've got that red, bit of alizarin and the bit of phthalo blue, it's gonna make a real deep purple. And that purple is gonna go nice with our crimson and everything's gonna blend and it's gonna be lovely. And then the last color we're gonna use is just straight midnight black. And we just let that mix in with the rest of our blues that we have up here. And then we'll go back in and blend it all out. Get a little bit more of our black. I'm using a big Pro Series canvas, like the Stage 3 Gallery Wrap Stretch canvases. And so I've got this big edge along the side that I also had to cover in liquid white in order to have the colors blend the same way they do here. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna wash the old brush here with liquid paint thinner, just like Bob Ross does. Right into the paint thinner, shake the rest off into a can and then beat it on our beater bucket. Our beater bucket is just basically a, a Lowe's bucket with a wire golf ball bucket down at the bottom. Just gives you a lot of surfaces to get that paint and the color and the everything back off so you get a clean brush. Dry it on a little bit of a paper towel. You want it to be dry when you go to blend it, otherwise you get these streaks and it just doesn't just look strange. So before even that, I can see I want a little bit darker crimson in there. I might go ahead and mix it. Let's see. Up in there. Get that last little bit off of our brush and then we'll go into our lighter area and start there before we start at the dark area and bring it all back in. Okay, now with our clean brush, we're gonna start right in our yellow area and just make little X patterns back and forth like this, just back and forth, back and forth. Kind of bring in some of the red from each side, up and down. And just 
kind of mix them until you can't tell where one starts and one stops. You don't want to start coming out into your dark colors and then bringing everything back into your light colors, otherwise we wasted our time over here. What's the point, right? Well, if you're on a smaller canvas, use just less than you think, just a little area of, of yellow and then a little bit more red because the more you do it, the more you're going to bring this dark in and if you didn't have enough to start with, your bit of yellow is either going to go green or it's going to go away. So like I said, you don't want yours, your yellow circle to be this big if your canvas is only this big. You're going to run out of room. Don't worry about what it looks like down here. It's end up being shadows in our snow or our water or whatever we're going to put down there. I'll let the viewer decide what it is. Now that I've got a lot of liquid white on my brush from doing the bottom here where we didn't have much paint at all, I can go into my yellow and kind of start to recreate this reflection that's going to be on the bottom. A lot of it we're going to lose, but uh, some of it we won't, so we might as well do it. Get the yellow without even washing the brush. You can see the white paint, and then it's got the yellow there. Not a lot of the, even the blues that we picked up. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of redo it a little bit upside down. It's going to go a little bit greener down here because we have the blue, but it's fine. It's water. It's not going to make a difference. Go back into our red that we had. Put it underneath. Just kind of mushing it in there. Not even any kind of technique or anything, just smooshing it onto the canvas. And then we'll get a little bit of our dark blue. Make it real dark down the bottom. Like that, and then we'll probably run out of room. So before I go blend those together, I wanna to wash my brush off. Be back in a jiff. All right, again, started my lightest area. And just kinda of make X's until they blend together, just like they did in the sky. Looks pretty good. We just gotta throw some shadows in and then we'll throw our clouds on and we'll get rocking and rolling. We're gonna switch to a one inch brush now and we're gonna go through and just lay a couple shadowy bases of a cloud in there. And what I'm gonna do with that is just take a little bit of our Prussian blue and our alizarin crimson and just mix them right there on the brush. It's gonna make a dark purpley color. I don't know why you can see that. And then we're just gonna decide where we wanna make a mess and uh, just start dropping on some cloudy shapes. And by we do that, we just make circles, just like this. Circle, circle, circle. In the shape of a cloud, pushing harder sometimes, sometimes less. And you get these little swirls and you don't wanna blend them all out. You wanna keep some of them there. And as we get lower to the bottom of our cloud, we're going to get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And push lighter, touch lighter, until everything's blended in, just like that. Now, you can make your cloud shape however you want to make it. But for my cloud, that one looks good right there. If you don't like that, don't do it like that the next time. That's pretty much it. Learn from your mistakes, that's what I do. Learn from your little happy accidents, right? Do this. All right, now what we'll do to make our clouds the way I like to make them, obviously you see me laying out the shapes here, but we're gonna get pure white on our palette. Mix it with a little bit of Little lizard and crimson, you don't need a lot because it's so powerful. You just want a couple streaks in there. That's really much, pretty much it. A little bit of blue for our other little section of cloud. You don't want to over mix it. You kind of want to leave it marbled like that. Let's see if I can get you a better view. You see what I mean? That way it'll transfer differently when we go to put it on. So with our white, come in here with our palette knife 
and just very lightly touch the side of it with that bit of that little roll of paint that's there. It'll start to change colors. Just stay on the edge. Stay on the edges of your clouds and come down like an inch and a half and make another cloud shape, okay? I'm gonna come up here, we're gonna decide this one's in front of that one. This one's way off in the back, so it's not, it's gonna take less paint than the other, all right? Kind of smush it on where you think, and then when we go back in and it blends out, you gotta decide when to stop. Simple. Okay, clean, dry, one inch brush needs to be dry. Very, 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 very dry. Don't mess around with it. Then we're gonna come in. Might as well do our lighter areas first. Since we're sitting right here. And just very lightly use the top edge of the brush. You can see how much I'm using, like 20 bristles, that's it. Very lightly touching it. If you push too hard, you're gonna blend it away and it's not gonna be there anymore. And as you can see, the more we mix it, the more we're hiding those shadows that we put in. And with swirls, you get these cool little swips and dips and valleys and humps and all this stuff. And again, we're only really using the top half of the brush. At least we're trying to. sky full of clouds and then what we do is just swipe up okay and all that is is just flattening the paint as you go up just gonna make it a little flat don't worry about down here we're gonna be covering it with mountains okay so if you hit down here and leave these little marks like that don't worry about it again straight up with our brush very 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 lightly very lightly all the way to the top and then you just come to the side very lightly again. Very, 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 very lightly. I never know what it's gonna look like until we get done, so. Looks good to me. So what we're gonna do for our mountain to begin with is get a little bit of our midnight black, a little bit of Prussian blue, and a little bit of the dark sienna, and just mix these up. It's gonna look real dark, almost black. Okay, get a little bit of our alizarin crimson in there. Mix it all up until it's a real deep, dark brown color. Like that. Pull it flat out, and then what we're gonna do, wipe our knife off, come over here to our white, and just mix in a little bit of the white to see what our color is gonna look like up there. And that's a nice kind of grayish, brownish color which will look good for our far off mountain. So again, we get a little bit of paint there. I can't even, can't see where it is. <laughs> a little bit of paint on the end of our knife. And we don't want to make our mountains too pointy, but we want to have an, a nice little peak also. So, this one, all we're doing is just getting, what I'm gonna do is grab the bigger knife, do this a little bit faster getting our little roll of paint on the edge of the knife and just kind of pushing down. We only really care about what the top edge of this looks like, okay? It's not gonna make a difference what it looks like underneath here because that's all gonna be blended out. Okay, we just wanna have a nice edge on the top where our far off mountain is gonna live. You can make it look like whatever you wanna look like. Just stay away from the real pointy, like everything's got to, in nature anyway, you're not going to have mountains that are just jagged teeth, like shark's teeth, you know what I mean? You're going to have a little bit of character to them, a little dip, a little bend, maybe this one goes off a little flatter. It's never going to be a, just a straight thing. You can tell right where all of our green, where the blue mixed with the yellow down here. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to start over. You can change your idea a little bit and fix it versus having to scrape it all off and redo everything. Just fix it. 
covered right over that stuff. There's like a little hill, a little valley in there. It depends on how you blend it and what it's going to look like. And then we'll start to come up through our clouds. All right, a little bit of, little, two little humps there. A little happy accident, and then it'll make it look a lot more realistic. Scrape off all that extra stuff, mix it back into your color, and you've got more paint to play around with. Come up here. Like that, and straight up. This is gonna be our big mountain that comes eventually down here, and then we'll have one that comes down here, but we might as well get it started while we're here. Just like that, not a straight line. Kind of covering over, we're leaving a little bit of our mount, a little bit of our cloud there and here, and it just kind of gives you that, you know, what's beyond this mountain? What else can I not see back there that'll make people actually look at your painting and be like, wow. Oh, I'm going to scrape off all the excess and mush it in in other places and that'll give us our cool mountain when we go to blend it in. Which is perfect because I ran out of the right amount of color that we made so very rarely do we get to use it all. all right. So now I'm going to take my one inch brush grab it. It's got all this color on it already, which is fine. I'm just going to blend it off into almost straight, straight over from where it was. Okay, we're going to pull down, start doing our little X's. And the more you do this back and forth, one way or the other, you'll be able to see dark areas and light areas where you can imagine snow would lay or that they would cast a shadow from where our light source is. So don't blend them all out. You don't want it to be the same color brown or the same color gray. You want to have little dark areas in there, little light areas where you know it's never it's never gonna look the same. There we go. Right there. this little bit of kind of misty whitish area where it looks like we forgot to paint it and then when this comes in much darker then uh, you'll be able to see that there's distance there come back in here and just very lightly kind of pull down on our mountains and just wherever the paint sticks let it stick and wherever it doesn't stick then that's fine depends on how much you grab and you know the lay of your land if you pull straight down it's going to look like a cliff if you go you know, a little angle or pull to the side you're going to have a little bend there you got to decide what looks best for your mountain Two inch brush and just in the same way that we painted them we're gonna go up just slightly in and just start making our our trees just like Bob does and what you're doing is staying kind of in that misty area between the snow and between what's underneath it is what you want to stay in Razor blade just cut everything off, and that's not what we want. So again, we're going to take the bottom of these. And again, not in a straight line. Kind of go up and down and up and down. This misty area with our next set of trees is going to make it look like those are further away. So what I'll do is change color a little. Because who wants to look at the same color? things all the time. Let's 
go just to hit and miss. area right just by doing little circles all right now what we'll do is come in with our our uh, one inch little bristle brush that Bob uses here and just get a little bit of our orange a little bit of our yellow and a little bit of our red mixed together on the same brush and come in where we had our our um, right underneath the bit of our last set of forest that we did Okay, just like that. Now what I like to do is give those trees back there something to show you that they're trees. So we'll mix a little bit of brown, a little bit of white on our palette here, and then go back in and just pull down every so often, leave a little tree trunk. Different sizes, different angles. It's just gonna look like some tree trunks off in our aspen forest back there. Which we can actually cover up a little bit. There we go. And then when we wanna come back in, we'll take a little bit of liquid white, mix it down here, like that. Come in and just highlight those trees with this mixture of the same two things that we made the shadows with in liquid white. Pretty much it. Remember, I mean, you don't want to, again, have them all the same size or the same shape or, you know, different heights, different levels. You'll just end up smushing whatever you made. There we go. You know what, in my mind, I even want a few more tree trunks that are showing. So I'm just gonna go back in and with the same dark, just do a few less of them. There's some that are off in the distance, but I want some of them to be up in the front here. Or at least more visible. There we go. And for that, I'm just using the darkest color that we have which is that dark purple that we made up. Be there anyway. Just pull straight down with a two inch brush and then we'll go to the side. Not too hard. So we'll take that same brush back into the dark purple and brown mixture that we had. And we'll just come in and just make a little, little bush. Back and forth. Now, what I wanna do is just get the slightest amount of paint thinner on my brush. Go through the little bit of green here. Just nice dark green and just very lightly come on and just color those bushes in. Like that. And then that will look pretty neat, everyone. Okay. Just come straight across, straight across. Bam. Now we'll go put our water line back there and show you where. So we go like this. I'm gonna be very straight with it. Very straight. And come down on that side. Very, very straight with it. 
And then for real far away ones, I'll take a two inch brush and just go over it. You don't want to have the same, sorry, you don't want to have the same amount of detail in your waterline way back here that you do up close. So we'll take this, we'll go across it with a brush and just that little bit of white line back there will show you where our water is and that's all we really need. So in the meantime, before we get too far away from our mountain over here, we might as well get some more white and some more thalo blue, real dark. We'll come up here and just highlight our mountain with this shadowy color. To all the way to the bottom but you want to go about halfway down and then come up here and just big long strokes up just like that and that'll just blend our snow for us in the way that we laid it down and it'll be easier to put on our our layer of trees in the front of it here but to kind of blend these back and forth just so it makes it easier to kind of lay our next layer of trees and again we're going to get a good amount of it on the side and come over here and make our other mountain that lives in here and comes down behind our trees. There we go. Bam. Got the mountain. This one's going to be framed anyway, so it's always good to paint the paint the edges if you can, because you never know if your client's going to frame it or not. And uh, if they just hang it the way it is, and you have these bare white edges, you know it's not going to look as completed as it should. But you want to have some kind of color over there. You don't want it to just be all white. Just in case they don't frame it. Get our snow going over here, finish off this side. Now this side, I imagine, is going to be in the sun compared to the side over here. So we're going to just use a lot of white. And again, just let it glob on however it wants to stick. Just let it stick. You want it to be thick on this side because this mountain's real close to us compared to the one back there. So just let it glob on and drag down and put as much or as little as you want until you get that look that you're going for. We'll start making some trees. Get some trees. We'll make some more of our dark mixture here though because we're going to need a lot of it. Okay, what I want to do now is take this brush that my friends got me for Christmas. Dear friends. Dear, dear friends. It's a beautiful brush too. Let's see, we just want to get it nice and thick, mixed in there. Ruin this beautiful brush with this dark, dark color. And I want to put a little tree right up in the front. I come in and just make a little skinny little tree right there. You want to have a fair amount of paint on your brush, nice and globby, so it's got something to stick to you when we put our uh, highlight color on it. And we'll do another one on the side. Uh, allow this paint to slide and stick over the other paint that's there. There we go. And then we'll continue. Make our little guy there. Make our little reflection. And then just very lightly go straight down and across straight down and across come from the other way and we can do whatever there we go we got our trees now we'll get a little bit of paint thinner off of here get our darker color off tiniest amount of paint thinner just like one or two drops right into our dark green sap green here 
and then just lightly over where we just put our tree there. Very lightly. This stuff is really wet. So you don't want to smush the tree shape that you made. You just want to give it a little bit of color. Or so I was told anyway. Let's see. So now we're going to get pretty much the last of that tree color we made. We'll have to end up making more. That's what the rest of our piles are for, so don't worry. And then we're going to come over here and make a slightly taller tree. Right in the front there. Just like that. And how we're doing the trees is just kind of pushing in with the tip. And the more you push in, the more you get this arc shape. So kind of hold it at an angle, push it in back and forth. And the more you get down, the more we're pushing on the bristles, bending them straight down to get a wider shape. See what I mean? Nice and thick. And uh, do another one, maybe a little bit taller, but right next to it. Just little taps. And the more we go down, the more you push out. And then every so often you make it like a heartbeat. Boop, 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 boop. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna take the bottom of our tree and we're gonna pull to the side. Make a little bit of a, like a shoreline there. There we go. So we pull out and then you come down a little bit and then you come down a little bit and you come down a little bit and that gives you this illusion of distance. If you, everything is you know, going up, then it makes it look very weird to your mind's eye. So, what I was gonna do, let's see if we can wipe some of that off, get the littlest bit of white, and just put a water line underneath that guy, because he lives back there. So we'll take another little bit, put him underneath there. You wanna be as straight as possible with your water line. Otherwise, your perspective gets all messed up. So, there we go. You can literally take it and like squeeze it down to the edge that you want it to be. And wherever it kind of drops off and deposits thicker, let it. You don't want to mess with it too much. It doesn't, it's not going to look symmetrical. You don't need it to look the same back there. You can take the slightest bit more. Come over here with our water line. And you're just looking for that little edge on on the deal. And you can see that this is higher, this is lower, that means that's further away, this is a little bit closer. Same thing. Come over on this side, get our water line, and we'll use the back of the knife this time. Just like that. If you don't like it, like I don't like the way that looked, you just wipe it away until it looks like you want it to look. mess with our reflection too much. You can even take just to just to differentiate the land there. You can take a little of the brown. We picked up a little bit of blue, which is not a big deal. Brown and blue like that. The base of our trees gives us a little bit of like beach to work with. And then we can take our white Just stay on the edges. Don't want to overdo it too much. As long as you can get a little bit of edge there. And they're straight. They have to be straight. Don't want them to be different angles. Otherwise, it's going to look messed up. It's got to be straight there. Straight, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Straight as you can get it. You don't want to come down like this. It's going to look all messed up. A little teeny bit of paint thinner. Go through that green again. And then we'll highlight these trees here that will touch a green. Remember, you're just barely touching at this point. You don't want to smush the, the shape that we made before by pushing too hard and smushing on it. That's why we dipped it in the paint thinner. And I'm talking about we dipped the corner in the paint thinner, not a lot. Otherwise, it's going to be real runny. It's going to be dripping down your canvas, which is not what you want. There we go. A little bit darker, you can see we've got some space back there, and you can even pop in some little grassy bits on your on your uh, 
bit of land just lift straight up mixed up on our bigger brush over here we're gonna put a couple big old trees right here a little bit taller than the ones behind it come down a little bit lower than our water line was just like these guys we're on the same level as those are on the same level and it's just giving us this illusion of distance is all we want to look at fix our little side of our tree on that side just by literally making a mess coming in and pushing with the tip of it and the more you push the more you push on it and that will give you a bigger tree to work with see what i mean and you can imagine going up and getting smaller but we're starting from the top and coming down now i'm going to get a little bit of brown on my brush come down here where did all that blue come from doesn't matter no mistakes no mistakes there we go we're just pulling straight across Blending it in the way I want it to look. There, looks about good. You can even just for good measure put some reflections down here of this tree. Alright, I'm not gonna need them, I don't think, but just for my mind, I gotta put them in there so I can imagine what's coming next. Same thing over here, but this is all gonna be dirt, so don't worry about this guy. We're gonna put in a little teeny tiny few rocks. Back in the distance here. Let me put one right here. Just like that. I'm gonna make the same kind of shape underneath him as he is on the top. Like that. Oh, okay. Now we can very, very, very lightly and as straight as possible, pull down. And kind of go side to side, just the teeniest little bit. You don't want to make it go away. And then just put in our little water line on our rocks, got his little reflection. Everything looks good. We can even Put in a bigger one over here. I like to use a small edge of the knife over here. We can do a kind of like a little mini mountain. Like that. Make our little mini mountain shape on the bottom. Almost like a diamond. It's the easiest way to think about it. Doesn't have to look the same, especially if we're just going to take it and make it into a reflection like that. And then come in with our water line. And just like that, we've got our little rock. We can even take a bit of blue and a bit of white since we're in the shadow of everything here. And put a little bit of a little bit of a highlight on it. Come in here. Kind of get rid of that. Shoot, we can even take a little bit of dark and put it in our in our water if we're in the reflections just do the same thing but with um with your uh oil paint versus the liquid white get the same effect all right that little guy over there we'll just put like a that little smidgen of color on him back here i want to go all the way down he's far away you don't need to see all of the all of the highlights back there all right, now, now comes the fun part, guys. So we're gonna take a whole lot of dark color and we're gonna put it right there, right across our painting. Now, obviously that wasn't enough. So we're just gonna fill in the rest. Doesn't need to be black. It could be purple, it could be a mixture of you know, all sorts of stuff, green, brown, red, whatever. And we want to bring it up 
high enough. You don't want to have too much space in between there, otherwise it makes you look like you're a giant looking down on everything instead of looking straight at it. If you're looking straight at something, you're not going to have a lot of room behind you that you can see, or behind the thing that you're looking at that you can see over. So make sure you are perspectively correct. You don't want to have your dark area down here and a ton of water and then your dark and then nothing down at the bottom. It's just going to look weird. Trust me, done it. I have done it. There we go. Okay. Then we got our dark bit, our little beaver dam. And uh, what we'll do is we'll have our beaver dam here, then our water, and our water will run along the side over here. And then we'll have some brown over here, just to. Like that. <coughs> some real dark colored water down underneath. It's got to be a different color than the water above, okay? So you can put black in it, you can put green, you can put brown, you can put red. if you hold it or if you flip it or whatever. It doesn't matter. Mistakes don't matter. You can always turn it into something easy. And you just have to stand back sometimes and look at it, which is all I'm doing. Standing back and looking at it. And looking at it, I know that I don't have enough dark there. See, and I told you we didn't even need to do those reflections. Just a waste of time. A lot of the same color base for the trees, which is kind of red, blue, and black. Give you this purple color. Like I said, you can throw green in there. You can throw brown in. Just whatever you did last time, add a different color this time, and you'll get this different... Imagine that. You'll get a different color. Use different colors, and you'll get a different color. I'm leaving that in the video. And what I'm going to do is take a big bit of white and some dark sienna, okay? Kind of mix those together make this wood color okay just like we did with our tree and everything else okay you can see it there we're gonna save this panel for later then we're gonna use this right here okay so we're gonna alternate between our wood color that we just made and our dark wood colors that we have over here our Van Dyke brown and our dark sienna so what I like to do first is go with the dark bits and then you know where to highlight afterwards so you take a roll of paint just like we've been doing everywhere okay and all we're going to do is just make a, a slice, just like that. Just leave a little slice of paint just everywhere until you run out. And come back, grab something else, and go back the other way. Make just random X patterns with these, okay? Just like a beaver does. Just X, 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 right? Back and forth across the whole thing, just using the littlest bit of, of paint. Okay, you can even use some of that dark color paint when we get into our darker colors, our darker side over here. Over here, it doesn't matter. We just want to mix it down to about where our blue water was, okay? And not mix it, just kind of leave streaks. They can be different sizes, they can do different, you know, one can go straight up or, you know, to the edge or whatever doesn't make a difference. You want them to be sharp at the top, right? Make them look like chunks of wood up there. Don't cover over all of our dark shadow behind it and just keep filling them in until you think you've got enough on there. Pretty easy. We're just scraping them in with the knife and just kind of laying it down and depositing it where it will sit and wherever it doesn't want to go, that's fine. We come back and grab some more and put some more down. Kind of go right through that rock that we made a little bit. Right, and just until it looks like a bunch of crisscross patterns of dark shadowy bits, a bunch of tic-tac boards, right? All different sizes, all different ways that they're moving, right? 
see some of that brown. Then we can come back in with our lighter color and just very lightly over those ones that we've done already, whatever paint sticks, let it stick. Don't try to get it in a certain area if it doesn't want to go there. Just keep moving on and keep doing the same thing very lightly. You don't want to smush over what we've done. You just kind of want to deposit the paint onto it. All right, just want to get it to stick enough there and still have it nice and globby, I like to say, where it's real thick and sticking off the canvas. If I wanted to touch it when it dries, it'll actually feel like little logs. Again, don't make them all the same color. Again, here was a perfect example. Only half of the paint deposited on one side only. It looks really cool like that. Don't overthink it. Don't overdo it. They don't have to be the same. You really don't. Like that. Get some more. Mix it up a bit. Like that. It goes sideways. Doesn't matter. A beaver dam is just a crazy an assortment of logs that are stuck on top of each other back and forth over and over again. All from different kind of trees and branches that it's picked up. So make some of them white. Highlight a little bit of them with white or you know, some of them with a different color brown than what you've been using. The more colors you use, the cooler it's going to look really. And it's going to be, you know, you're going to have more to show people that are looking at it for the details. You know, they're going to see all these cool different colors. I've got, I don't know, seven to ten different colored bits of wood in there just from randomness is really what it is. You put it on there at random and have it deposit wherever it's going to stick. And that's nature, man. I'm sure that's how the big guy did it when he was creating a forest. Just like that, don't overdo it, don't overthink it. Come back in, you can make a couple of them real sharp if you want. Get some little twigs sticking off the side. Make it look really realistic. Remember, the more you do, the better it's gonna look, but you've got to be careful. There's always that one extra stroke that's gonna kill it. We're gonna take a big fan brush, size eight, and we're going to get as much paint on it as we can possibly get. Okay, you want it to stick on the side like that. Now we're going to come in here and just touch, okay? Again, you want to have a lot. You want to touch it. You want to come up and leave a little bit of space in between where, our, uh, where you can tell there's some distance there. We're going to have to get some more paint out. Half the time I never use enough. Other times I've, I, uh, I never use what I get out. And other times I gotta go back for more. Okay, we're gonna go over the top of those. Just like that. Okay, that's gonna cover over a little bit of our dam. Show that it's behind there. We're gonna have this little bit of land that comes out like this. So that's the bottom of our bush right there. And, uh, Let's see, might as well do one on the other side if we've got enough paint. Since we're going to go back into the paint box anyway, might as well do this one in brown, because that's all we got left. Okay. We'll go like this, just touching on the side of the, the brush, and whatever sticks off of the side, just let it stick off, and then we got this whole other side we can use too. Okay, up into the, the thing. Flip it over. You want it to be globby because you want to have something for our uh, our highlight paint to stick to. Okay, so if there's not enough up there, it's going to be hard to get your your lighter color that we're going to put on to stick to anything if there's nothing there. You want to make it really globby. It gives it these cool uh, details. We could do one in dark green, right? Do one like this. Get that. There's a lot of paint thinner on this brush, so you want to be careful and just, just touch it. You don't want to have it run down too much. If it starts running too much, you know you got too much on your brush. Okay, just like that. And then with this other one, we're going to use the 
liquid white with the green to give us a much lighter green color like that and just touch it and whatever sticks sticks and whatever doesn't doesn't and that's it you don't want to cover up all your shadows and you don't want to go all the way down you can put a couple little grass bits at the bottom of that thing you see when I got, when I don't do videos, I just sit here and talk to myself just like this with not being on camera. Okay, now what we forgot to do was do the uh, this tree back here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit of brown, make up our tree trunk color, gonna be a little dark, and just go right down the center of this guy. Again, whatever sticks sticks, whatever doesn't doesn't, and that's all you need. And then we can go back in with our our green and liquid white and pink thinner, nice and nice and uh, thin, so it'll stick to this. As you get down darker to the bottom, you want to leave it darker, not as so not as bright as those ones up there. And we can even take just to mess with people's minds a little bit of this on top of this guy, like only half of it is in the sun. You know what I mean? Those little tricks make people look twice at it. All right, welcome back. We got some more paint on our palette. So we'll see if we can't finish this thing. Let's see here. Get a little bit of Prussian blue, throw it down in the base of our water just by scooping up a bunch and just pushing and kind of getting it to deposit on either side of the knife until you like the way it looks. Doesn't have to be the same. You can leave it real blobby if you like, and that'll be these real cool little waves. But whatever we do, we want it to be darker than the water above. Okay. Like that. And just kind of make a mess, just back and forth, side to side. Until you like the look of it, and that'll be our water. Every so often, take some white. Because now we're in the shadow of our mountain, right? I want it to be darker. It's like that. And then we'll intermix those two with our liquid white. Get a little bit of titanium white with it. A little bit of brown, a little bit of everything. And we'll come in like this. Like so, remember we want to be perspectively right, so you got to play with it until it looks right in your mind. In my mind, get a fair enough roll of it on there to have it work, right? There we go, now we got our bit of land, we could throw a bush in there if we wanted to if we wanted to, but keep playing with it until it looks right to your mind. Now remember, on the other side of the bank against this, it's gonna be a real flat water line. And then the shoreline picked up again. Shoot, we can even do that right now. Do that right now and knock it out like this. There we go, right? Looks perspectively better in my mind anyway. Again, you don't have to keep it there, but sometimes I'll put stuff there just so I can step back and look at it and think ahead a few steps and go, okay, if this is here and that and there. And a lot of pioneers, you know, paint differently than me, but, you know, if you're watching, you obviously like what I do, so I try to explain my method to my madness. But in the meantime, we're going to get another bit of some trees going here with these big old, this big old number eight fan brush. I'll fill it up and we want to have our trees for this one be real close so they got to be taller than most everything around us except for our mountains right so we want to come right up through our beautiful sky that we did right down to the tree there get a little bit more paint on our brush just so we got the edge and most of you are like ah oh, why did you just do that I feel you I feel you come down now as we get closer over these mountains you want to get the littlest bit of paint thinner and 
mix it in with our oil paint and that makes it light enough to roll over the rest of this stuff. See what I mean? Otherwise you start turning real muddy and uh, when you go to put on your, your highlight coat, it's just gonna be a mess. You go, why didn't you tell me, Josh, about the paint thinner? Like, well, I did, you weren't listening. Here we go, right behind that little bush there. That looks like a good looking tree to me. On our sap green with our liquid white, just do the top of this a certain color. All right, and then as we get below the mountain, that color is going to change to a darker green. And in my mind, that would be me. Now if we just go in with our liquid paint thinner, just the littlest bit on the brush is all you need. And then go in with our darker green, our sap green, and the liquid paint thinner. And then continue to highlight this tree. You can see how it's gotten darker now. We've gone down behind the, the mountainside. Again, when we get down to the bottom, it doesn't need to be green down here. You don't want it to be green down there. But what we did forget was putting in our uh, our trunk of our tree. So we'll come back in, lay a little bit in there, just a little. And then as you get further down, the trunk of your tree gets bigger, obviously. Come in and we'll pull from the side, do this cool little wood bark effect which we're just going to come back in and cover over anyway so don't go too nuts with it you're not going to ever see the whole tree trunk in a tree so except maybe down the bottom just like that cover over those bits just a little just enough so you can just barely see that there's a tree trunk holding everything up back there pretty easy we'll come back in we'll make some more of our tree color from our blue and and black and crimson get it nice and thick on the brush like thick thick very sharp edge okay by the sharp edge we want to pull straight down real sharp edge and that'll be for our next tree i'm just gonna live right there and just try to pull down as straight as possible don't want to have too much space between your trees otherwise they get real big on the way down and then just come in and just very lightly touch as you go. And then we'll just start globbing it on. That's what we want. You get these cool little, just cool little details. They're even hard to describe, but the brush does it on its own. You don't have to do anything. And for lazy painters like me, that's a big plus. Okay, let me do a short one here, just over the mountain. Not like that. Straighten it out. We want to make these ones nice and tight so you can't really see through them to what, you know, nothing that we painted back there, right? Make as many as you want. Make them as tall as you want. Just make them. And then we'll come back in with our tree trunks. And uh, after we do this last one, make it a big one or should we make it a little one is the question. I mean, how much bigger can you go than that, right? So we'll go just off the thing like this. All we're trying to do is just cover what's back there, but leave a little bit of room. So I know it doesn't make any sense. Cover it, but leave it visible. I don't know. Don't ask me, I'm just the painter. Do a couple on this other side, and then we'll go back and highlight everything. And we'll be very close to being done. Him. 
could stop him back there, I guess. Or you could bring him all the way down. It's really up to you. What we do here decides the perspective of our painting, right? If we continue to come down, now this tree just got a lot closer than that tree. Right, have that there. Yeah, make a bush. We take the bottom of our tree and pull that out. The grass. We can put another bush in front of that. Like this. Leave a little bit of space in between there. And then when we come back in and highlight them, then you can decide what your bush is going to look like. All you want to do is have a, a few bushes out there, just the shapes, and then you can come in and fix them. Or come in and tell us what they're supposed to look like when you highlight them with whatever color you're gonna use. That still got a tree we gotta put back here. We'll make him like humongous. Make him like a mega tree. So I want to like really glob up this paintbrush. I'm talking like big, thick nastiness, right? And then we're gonna come in. We'll say the tip of this guy is like off the charts, right? Come down, we're gonna make his trunk real big because he's close to us. Okay, just like that. And then we'll get the whole rest of this paint and start making our big old tree. Just by globbing it on there. A little teeny bit of paint thinner. Make it slide over your mountains. Otherwise you get really muddy. Again, I want this one to fill in all this area. So make him enormous. This enormous thing. Look at that. We used up that whole pile. This big old tree. Like I said, we'll fill them in, and then with the last little bit, since we're painting the sides, might as well do his a bit of his branches on this side. And the rest of the bushes at the bottom over here. It's a big old tree. Okay, so now we're gonna have to make a big old trunk if we're gonna tree that big. Right, start off small up there, we're gonna need to make more. And right, then we'll just start pulling sideways, and the more we pull side, the further we get down, the bigger we're gonna pull sideways. like that. <clears throat> there we go. Go from the other side. Wherever you want it to look. Stick, little twig. We'll get them on these guys. Look at all that paint just riding up the knife. Big old thick trees over here. Bit more detailed as we go down, they get bigger. 
bigger, bigger, bigger. What's cool about this technique is you get these little breaks and stuff where it looks like real bark of a tree. It'll feel like real bark too when we get done. There we go. All the way down on all five. We've got our ones over there. We've got our massive one over here. And now we can go back and highlight them. So we just want the littlest bit of paint thinner. I'm talking like the littlest bit. Dip it in, shake it off real hard, and then come in here. You don't want it to be too runny. So for these, again, you don't want to touch too hard because we've already laid out the shape. We've already laid out our details. We just want to cover it down. So you don't want to go all the way down. Down here should not be as bright as it is up here. You want to get uh, darker as we go down because we've got all this shadowing down here. You got to remember. And because we've dipped it in paint thinner, it doesn't go muddy. It's not picking up all the and mixing with all the dark that we put down initially. You can every so often go back and get a little bit more and then come back and it just makes it a little bit runny. That's what you want. It's the runny paint is going to stick to the thicker paint that's up here. Okay. And again, you don't want to cover all your dark and the more you get down here, the less green you want to have. Okay. Try it one more time. A little bit of paint thinner. Wipe it in. Not too runny. The last tree on this side. Don't cover over all of your trunk either. You leave some real cool little bits that we made if you leave them exposed like that. Now in my mind, it just doesn't look right. With those being so bright out there and these ones not having anything on them. So just very lightly in different spots put uh, a little bit of the trunk. These big ones have them and these little ones have them too. Just like that. Nothing too crazy, nothing too detailed. We want all of our focus to be on these ones up here. Now we're going to come in with that a little bit more paint thinner. Only enough to make it stick. That's all you don't want it to be too runny, especially not now. And we're just going to cover in there just like that. Now, on this last one, we're going to have to use probably the last bit of green and a little bit more paint thinner. want to smoosh the shape that you made. You just want to highlight it with a little bit of color, that's all. And you don't have to touch hard for it. You do not have to push hard. Just the lightest bit. And that's going to separate our tree here. And the stuff that's behind it. Just a little bit of color change is all you need. All right, now we have the need for some ground here. So if we take a little bit of brown, and just pull straight out with our knife, nearly straight out. A little bit down, a little bit to the side. Just like that, and that'll be our little beach, okay? That's a little bit different color from the stuff that's back here. There we go. Now we can have our water trail off along here. Like this. Like that. Do, 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 do. Want to make it straight. Remember, don't want your water line all screwed up. It's going to mess up your perspective. 
There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect, folks. It just has to be there. It doesn't have to be anything. Take our uh, big thick, our big thick uh, Van Dyke brown here, and just put in a couple swipes like we did on the mountain, and that's going to give you these cool little details that we can't get if we just tried to paint some dirt. You know what I mean? And come back in. A little ridge. That's all we want to do. Leave a little ridge. <clears throat> then we can take if we wanted. Put a little bit of grass in here. Right? Get that grass that lives in the water. Up there a little bit. Should we even take some yellow in here? And just lightly touch on our thing and just lift up the littlest bit and that'll give us these bits of grass that we see here. And you can always go back in and straighten everything out with your water. There we go. You can even take and scrape in a couple reeds every here and there. The rest of the blue and stuff that we have, we can continue making our little waves come at us here. The ripples in our water and that detail is what's going to catch people's eye and fetch the bucks. It's going to catch the bucks. You ever look at water, especially in the shadow of something, it's uh, it's very dark, it's almost black. So that's what we want to do. Have it much deeper, darker color than it is up here, down here. It's more in the shadow and uh, it's more turbulent down here. Scrape it in, really push hard. And there we have our little beaver dam. It's, uh, it looks really good actually, guys. We just gotta um, do the last little bit of highlighting on our bushes down here at the bottom and we'll be done. And then just very lightly come in and touch over those bits that we had laid down before. Only problem is I don't have near enough to do that. So this guy can come in and steal it all. There we go. dead dead uh, bushes that are always in the shade never get much sun so they're a little bit different color than the rest Let's see if we can't put a little bit of highlight on the highlight maybe a little bit of red a little bit of green it turns into a beautiful brown color if you do it right there we go And that is a good looking little painting, you guys.
good looking little painting right here. I do say so myself. Right on. My Instagram page is Happy Little Landscapes. My Facebook page is at Happy Landscape Art. Also the same on Etsy if you're searching for me on Etsy. The uh, link will be in the description. If you like this painting, you can buy it for sure. It's a beauty. I don't know if I want to sell it to you though. It's so nice looking. Okay. Now for me, everyone has their own kind of special little way they like to sign their paintings. And I guess I'm no different. I have my own little special way as well. So I'm gonna show you how I do mine. I paint my family into every painting that I do. And how I do that is with my little family flock of birds that we're gonna put way out here. Everyone does these birds at some point. But I like them because they represent myself, my beautiful wife, and my amazing daughter. And not a single one of my paintings is complete without having these three little birds in it. Somewhere. So if you purchase one of my paintings or if, uh, if you're looking to purchase one of my paintings and it doesn't have these little three birds in it somewhere and my initials, then you're getting ripped off. Well, like I said, I'd like to thank you guys for sticking with me and watching. And if you attempt this painting, please send me a photo of it. I'd love to see if, you know, my skills as a teacher or, you know, to try to see if I can convey what I'm doing to you. And if you can do it the same, that's awesome. Send me a photo. I would love to see them. Don't worry, everyone's is going to be a little bit different or a little different shape or size. I can't do it the same every time. So if you guys can't follow me, it's perfectly understandable. It's not gonna look exactly the same. And it doesn't have to, it has to look like you want it to look. It's gonna look like you painted it. And you can be proud. So this video will be on YouTube. If you're not one of my YouTube subscribers, please go subscribe to my channel right now. Leave, click the link and get out of here and go subscribe to my channel. Uh, trying to hit a hundred subscribers, which would just be wicked awesome for me. Just being a painter out of Las Vegas with 100 subscribers, that would be over the moon. Get on over to Etsy and see the new items I have in my store. This one will be listed very soon. It is available for purchase. It's a recreation of a painting that I did before with a lot more detail and a few different, few different little, little different subtleties to it. But this one turned out really, really well in my opinion. And uh, I thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you on the next painting.